Very good evening to everyone. We are here with yet another virtual session and on your growth. And I welcome Dr. Priyanka Varnaka on our platform to give a wonderful topic, which she is going to explain what it is, how it is. So I'll give a small introduction to her. She is a passionate homeopath doctor and she is practicing from last since two years. She is also uh, doing mindfulness, life coaching and mental health advocate to the patients. And she is passionate about nutrition, fitness, yoga, meditation and lifestyle management. She also covers online practice and consultation for the multiple patients from the last two years. And with this small introduction, I welcome you on our platform on your group. Thank you so much for joining on our platform. Thank you. Thank you for having me over. So, yeah, I'll just start my Is my screen visible? No, not yet. No, will not. Yeah, now it's coming. I think there's some internet. Yeah, it's visible, right? Not yet. Okay. Let me first tell you all why. So let me first tell you all why I decided to speak over this topic. Uh, we are all uh, having a living our life, right? Obviously we are. So, but how many of us are actually aware of the lifestyle we live or the type of living or the way of living, I would call it. So are we all aware of it? Are we consciously living our, uh, living our life or just living our life with, you know, the lifestyle that is as today today, like stressful lives or however it is, are we consciously living it or are we not? So that's the biggest question I'd like to ask first. And then let's start with the topic. So we'll begin the session with a quote. The part can never be well unless the whole is well. What do you all understand about like with the quote? It's very simple. One part of your body can never be well unless the whole of the person is well. So that's the simple and the basic understanding of this quote. So now we'll understand as per the, you know, uh, uh, like slowly as the session goes on, we'll understand what this uh, quote actually means. What is the detailed meaning of this quote? Before talking about health or uh, holistic health in detail, uh, let us first know about what is illness. What is illness actually? So there are too many uh, definitions or too many understandings of this word illness. So if you will say it is a state of poor health, if you will call it to be sickness, it you know, but it is an uncomfortable, it is a comfortable familiar word just to be the, just to understand the uncomfortable uh, feeling that a person is uh, experiencing. So it is nothing but unwellness in general. And it is an unhealthy condition of the mind or body, or, you know, you can call it as a state of being physically or mentally ill. So that is what we understand by illness. But let me tell you all my, uh, my uh, understanding of what an illness is. Uh, illness is a feeling and experience of unhealth, which is entirely personal to the person himself. The patient or the person, it is an inferior uh, uh, interior feeling of the person. So it is not something which is seen outwardly. So illness ne doesn't necessarily mean to be in uh, interior, uh, sorry, exterior. It can be a deeper interior feeling also. And it may not always accompany your disease. So, so many times, you know, you'll feel like you're sick, but there is no actual sickness in the body. Sometimes illness exists where no disease can be found. Yeah. 
then does that mean the person is free of illness if there is no outward manifestation do we say he is free of illness what do you all think so many a times there is um, you know there uh, need not be a visible uh, disease condition to justify our illness now let me tell you one, let me give you one example what do you mean by the sick okay like the sick is a term is it the person who is sick is it the interior of the man who is sick so i'll explain this in detail uh it is the man that is sick uh, or it is uh, or uh, to be restored to health now that man is to be restored to health not the patient uh, not his body not his tissues so we see many patients who say i'm sick they'll enumerate number of symptoms they'll come with lab reports they'll come with the pathology reports and they'll come with so many things you know telling everything is normal but still i have this feeling that i'm sick they'll give you n number of symptoms but when you see the reports there's actually nothing so they'll even tell you that you i have been to the most eminent physicians i have had my chest examined i have had my uh, you know cardiac examination done i have even had my eyes checked but still everybody says there is nothing wrong with me so you know does that mean he is free of illness he the patient comes and asks you know that am i free of uh, illness does that mean i'm sick but the pathologist will say that there is nothing wrong with you or everything seems good but then all the symptoms that he is giving you he does not sleep at night he experiences uh, aches and you know pains in the body but still the reports will say normal so sometimes what happens even when there is no outwardly manifestation he has a feeling of being sick and that most of the times the pathologists or the lab reports are not able to justify now here comes what into play is holistic health what actually we do in what actually the term holistic health means is what we'll study now or we'll know now before that we'll know what is health before going to holistic health we'll read about or we'll know about our health so the state of being well or free from illness or uh, according to the world health organization health is a complete state uh, it is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of uh, disease or infirmity so that's what as per how i explain simply because of absence absence of disease uh, simply because there is no disease doesn't mean the per patient is perfectly well there can be something which is disturbing him be it on a mental level be it on a social level it still bothers him so that we all we consider and then you know come into the concept of holistic health so now the holistic health it is arrive it arrived from the greek word holos now holos means all the whole or the entire holistic health is an approach of approach to life that considers multi dimensional aspects of wellness it encourages individuals to recognize the whole person spiritually physically mentally emotionally socially and intellectually so what happens you consider all these aspects and for, make the patient one whole and that's when holistic health comes into play you don't only look at the physical aspect aspect of the patient and you know treat him all the other out, uh, all the other aspects are also considered and then treated as a whole so there is a balance between the physical and emotional processes it is not just suppose a patient comes with the um, rheumatoid uh, rheumatoid arthritis now rheumatoid arthritis is a medical term for uh, joint pains so if a patient comes with this condition we just don't totally treat his uh, pains or just the knee pain or just the joint pains we look after what is the cause of the disease what has happened priorly what has happened before even the pain has come into play so this is the whole this is the whole concept behind knowing why this pain actually came into play there has to be a reason before this pain started right With, without without a cause there cannot be an effect so this is the whole idea so now when this balance is disrupted the whole concept or the you know the illness or disease or sickness comes into play 
so you know as i said earlier it is the man who is sick and any outwardly manifestation is the result of the sickness so when we treat a patient in homeopathy we take all these three aspects that is the mind body and the spirit into consideration and treat the patient as a whole and yeah now we'll know how the concept of holistic health developed a number of uh, ancient doctors championed the use of cocaine. I know that previously what used to happen like 200 years, 300 years ago to treat a range of ailments, uh, cocaine or, you know, blood leach, uh, bloodletting, leaching, all these methods. These were the violent crude methods that were used to treat illnesses. It was believed, you know, like uh, treating the patients by using metallic instruments or, you know, leaching. The, uh, leeches were let on the skin to you know, to soak the blood. So all this was believed to rid the body of impure fluids and that was uh, meant to cure the condition. So this was the concept that people used to believe in the ancient times. Then later, after, you know, the people started researching, people started living, a, that time people started ha having stressful life. That's when people started researching on what actually the lifestyle is and how all this happened. So even here, Socrates at that time, he uh, stated that for the part that can never be well unless the whole is well. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole cannot be well, uh, the part cannot be well unless the whole is well. Then Hippocrates was the father of medicine in 4th century BC and was the first one to encourage self-healing of the body. Physicians began to pay less attention to you know, holistic medicine after it was discovered that the germs were the cause of the disease. Uh, the emphasis was placed solely on symptoms and conditions and only medicine was the solution was for everything people start you know that time people only thought you know, after a certain period of time they only thought medicines are the only solution for everything but let me tell you most of the time we see patients who don't need medicines for most of the conditions they need therapy they need someone to talk to they need to share their emotions and that is what which is very important and that is the need of their art so that again is due to lack of awareness people aren't aware of themselves they they aren't aware what the mind and body can do you know by practicing mindfulness holistic medicine then came back to teach others about living a healthy lifestyle you know how emotional health uh, is important why it is important and all of this so yeah now we'll know we'll see about importance of holistic health while people are living longer today, you know, they're also living, uh, they're experiencing chronically high levels of stress and fatigue. You know, they're not living, they're not eating nutrient. Uh, So why holistic health is important? Because today we are living a very unhealthy lifestyle. What we are doing is we are chronically experiencing, you know, le high levels of stress. We are always fatigued by the end of the day. We don't eat nutrients, dense food. And we are only, you know, we are just exposed to this uh, unhealthy hair or water uh, or, you know, any, even if the, uh, females or the young generation they use personal care products every day that has so much of chemical so many chemical ingredients in it everything even on a minute basis but pile up on a longer duration it adds up to this uh, whole uh, you know idea of unhealthy lifestyle then people before they you know you live with chronic diseases and undiagnosable symptoms they know the, the modern day healthcare industry you know they have failed them then when you have undiagnosable symptoms they'll just send you with you know telling nothing is wrong with you and you know you, you're fine your reports are fine that's what they tell you and that is where you know a more holistic whole body solution became a standard part of the way we treat or support the healthcare system and holistic health also takes into account many external and environmental factors which we could be supporting or impacting our overall health and wellness. And it is important we have a systematic and you know and uh, a systematic way of uh, addressing health in the future. 
so when it comes to holistic health we are looking beyond the body you know we are looking beyond the physical body and we are also uh, addressing the physical emotional social spiritual and the intellectual health so all these aspects of holistic health are what enables a person to truly live, live each day in the healthiest happiest way and even if one area is compromised let's say one emotional area is compromised it will have an effect on your uh, physical life or even on your social so you know one emotional area which is unbalanced it will obviously show the result in your spiritual or your uh, psychological or your even social or work life balance there will this balance will definitely be lost so what it means is the whole all the five should be balanced to live a holistic lifestyle then even emotions and environment play a role in health just as much as medicines can you know the doctor may suggest that a healthcare a health condition cannot be treated unless the emotions are healed of the person and or the person is removed from that toxic environment most of the times medicines are not necessary to treat a condition only a triggering factor or the environmental factor if they are removed the patient obviously with time he'll start feeling better so when the trigger is not there he'll start feeling better and he'll start living a life less stressful life so also it is essential to prevent illnesses and find long term solutions for existing illnesses suppose if you are experiencing low energy the immediate response that might be to you know treat it will be to take off uh, caffeine or energy drinks this may be a band-aid solution but the lack of energy may also be a symptom of underlying disease that needs to be addressed so taking into account of the holistic health lack of energy may be caused by anxiety depression sleep deprivation and even diabetes so the whole idea is to appraise the pe- person as a whole now let us know about the five aspects of uh, holistic health so the first one being physical aspect our physical health is what most people think you know when it comes to health it's the only health that is what we mean by health so people don't go beyond the physical body this is mostly because the physical body is often you know that shows us the physical signs and symptoms and these physical signs and symptoms also very easy to track and measure so you if you have a burn or if you have some wound you can see the wound you can feel the wound you can you know it is seen and measured so that makes it to feel more abstract but when it comes to supporting your physical health there are a few uh, practices that everyone can benefit from you know and make a huge difference on your overall uh, well being that is a sleep for 8 hours each night 8 eight hours each night then you know this allows your body to truly rest and repair from the body our body has a circadian rhythm you know it plays a role it is play, it plays a very important role in balancing our uh, home, hormones in the body so when this circadian rhythm is imbalanced even the hormones are imbalanced that's when when the hormones are imbalanced you see the physical conditions there are so many physical conditions are having due to the imbalance of the hormones eat a nutrients uh, dense the nutrient dense diet that is high in plant based foods and organ- organic or pastured animal products then you can maintain a balanced blood sugar by eating meals and snacks that contain fat high word carbohydrates and protein every 3 4 hours so now what do you do the young uh, younger generations they go out they eat junk so eating junk for a day might be fine but eating junk every day 6 days a week that that is again an un- unhealthy lifestyle what should a balanced meal be it should contain carbohydrate proteins fiber and equal amount of uh, fats also that's when it gives you a nutrient dense uh, proportion in your body then you move your body for 30 minutes uh, 30 minutes each day while every person's exercise routine will be different everyone can benefit from this at least 30 minutes of movement each day it will keep you active it will keep you active then you know you can take uh, you can soak in vitamin d in the mornings that will boost your energy levels then you know limit uh, processed foods like i said which are highly inflammatory and suppose if you are a person who is very sensitive to inflammatory stuffs again you will start showing Uh, symptoms based on that then again i uh, avoid alcohol consumption and even smoking for that matter so these are the basic and the minimum uh, things that you could do to you know have a healthy physical body then talking about emotional 
many a times people you know overlook this part you know emotional health is just overlooked but it is as important as our physical health because our emotional health can affect our physical health if it is not prioritized what we believe in homeopathy is the mind comes before the body so mind is the you know what we call as the machine and then the body runs how the mind runs ways to support your emotional health so seek out therapy when needed therapy is an essential part of supporting our emotional health and that should be utilized therapy need not be you know mandatory to you know you need not go to a psychologist every time i say therapy it's not psychologist or a psychotherapist or it need not necessarily have to do anything with the medicines a therapy can also be talking to your close friend talking to your closed ones or you know having a discussion about what you feel or what you're going through that helps a lot on a day to day basis then practicing mindfulness and stress reduction habits that can help you better manage life's daily daily stresses so what is mindfulness i will come back to that later keeping a journal to record your thoughts and feelings you know journaling every day it's so helpful that once you start journaling you let your thoughts out you let your emotions out and you feel you start feeling better once you talk so it's same like talking to someone you're talking to a diary you're writing it down you're talking to yourself and that's when you give time for yourself you know about yourself you know how you feel internally to a certain stimulus to a certain external stimulus and also when you start journaling you'll start feeling grateful to what is happening in your life to your lifestyle and it will in turn bring positivity when you experience high levels of stress suppose it you know need not be necessary that you know today your mind uh, journaling or today you're feeling grateful that doesn't mean that to, it's only for today that you have to be positive but that today's one minute of journaling can help you to, in tomorrow stressful situations also so it is again on a long term goal not just for today then social aspect you know social aspect research has shown that the happiest people on earth have deep connections with their friends family and community this is often why religion is connected with happiness as uh, it can provide a deeper sense of community and support no matter what faith a person chooses so you know there are certain ways you can support your social health for so, you know first one being make time for in person connection while technology has allowed for us to feel more connected you know virtual connection also is not bad you can experience the same level of happiness as an in person connection does then you get involved in your local community you have you know go to, uh, whether it, this is to go through your church or local volunteer organization clubs or program at your school uh, kids school all this are social interactions which pro- which prove very beneficial and it improve and it helps to gain happiness then setting boundaries with people in your life that may increase stress or bring about toxic energy also you should never be afraid to walk away from friendships and relationships that are negatively affecting your health saying no and keeping boundaries is always a good good thing to do when it comes to your own happiness then spiritual aspects spiritual wellness does not necessarily mean that you need to become religious See, spirituality is not the same as being religious you know instead of your spiritual health you should also focus on how you are connecting with your inner soul the greater world around you spiritual well being also means knowing your inner self so that you can do by spending time in nature spending a few minutes with yourself meditating every day morning once you start meditating for for 5 minutes a day even a 5 minute of meditation can help you see the wonderful effects on your 23 on the later 23 hours of the day so that's how beneficial meditation has proved proven to be and if you're religious you can take time to practice your faith to be it anything you can go to your temple you can sit at home and you know you can practice whatever you believe in then is the mental mental aspect and this is even the most important aspect it often you know it is very closely related to emotional and uh, physical health but the biggest difference between uh, mental and emotional health is that uh, emotional health refers to your daily mood and emotions your behavior but mental health refers to our cognitive abilities that affect how our brain functions so you can support your mental health by you know always keeping your mind active by seeking out learning opportunities problem solving practices that challenge your brain keep your mind active keep doing activities you know that um, 
challenges your brain then you can do activities like gardening meditation yoga and other mindfulness practices that calm your mind and ground your body in the present so living in the moment is what is necessary then again consuming uh, you know nutrient uh, dense foods that are high in antioxidants and other uh, nutrients avoiding smoking drinking and consuming recreational drugs so again when you when we talk about mental health aspect aspect you'll see many of the doctors who will uh, you know stress over gut health that is because the brain is directly connected to the gut and a healthy gut is very essential for a healthy mind and that's when what type of food you eat and you know what are the contents or what are the proportions in which you eat the food becomes very necessary now let us know what healing actually is so healing is to become free from injury or disease or to restore to health of you know just being free from an illness so he healing is much more than just treating symptoms that again is holistic healing now let's talk about mind and mental health you know 9 out of 10 people have a certain mental disturbance so you know it need not be a mental disorder it can even be a very minute or a slightest mood disorder or a mood disturbance you know it affect which affect day to day life it can be it can range from mild to moderate symptoms so mental health is more than the absence of uh, mental disorders mental health is an integral part of health there is no health without mental health mental health is a state of well being in which the individual realizes his own, her own abilities can cope with the normal stresses of life can work productively and is able to make contribution to his or her community it is uh, also fundamental to our collective and individual ability as humans to think emote interact with each other earn a living and enjoy life so on the pay, on this basis the promotion protection and also restoration of mental health can be regarded as the vital concern of individuals communities and societies throughout the world now let's talk about mindfulness what actually is mindfulness see mindfulness is being in the present being in the present being aware and attentive so many of us are living a lifestyle worrying about the future or either what has happened in the past we constantly think about how we could have done better in the past or what can be done tomorrow none of us are constantly you know thinking what it is that moment today what is it that i'm doing right now the moment i'm living right now there are very few people who practice mindfulness otherwise others are just busy worrying about the tomorrow or something that has happened yesterday we keep uh, stressing over the things that has already happened or something or the anxiety of tomorrow so this is where mindfulness plays a very 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 important role because to stay in the present is the most difficult thing people actually feel for today because they cannot control their mind they cannot control their thoughts and that's when they feel lost so what and how you can practice mindfulness is again when you sit for meditation the first thing you can try or you know one can experience medit mindful mindfulness is while meditating so when you sit for meditation the first thing that you do is close your eyes and you know you direct your focus so that is called as self directed focus now once you start you know focusing yourself let's say 30 seconds after 30 seconds it is you know the general tendency of the mind to wander so your mind starts wandering but after a certain uh, minutes you realize that you are actually your mind is wandering that's when you notice so when you notice what you do is you guide back your mind to the self directed focus this is the cycle of mindfulness it is nothing but training your mind to stay at one place again it is not something you can achieve in one day everything takes time you know like how people go to the gym nobody becomes a power lifter or a weight lifter in just one day the same way you have the same way one person trains his body you have to train your mind in a very similar way you have to sit with it each day you have to give it time you have to tell it to act in a certain way and that's when it will process that way it will take its own efforts to process that way and that time you need not be consciously telling the mind to you know do this do that or you will not have to notice when your mind is wandering because at that time it will be doing on its own so this is the cycle of mindfulness now again why is uh, mental health uh, 
important for overall health. Mental and physical health are equally important. It's not like only mental health is important or it's nothing like only physical health is important, but both are equally important components of overall health. For example, if I have to tell you, depression increases the risk of many types of physical health problems, particularly long-lasting conditions like diabetes, heart, heart disease, and stroke. Similarly, the presence of chronic conditions can increase the risk for mental illness. So what happens is how we feel mentally can affect how we feel physically. And it is important to, important to be able to control both in order to live a healthy lifestyle. Because most of the time we keep telling, you know, there are so many negative emotions we feel ourselves with. You keep telling only the negative thoughts that comes to you. You keep feeding your brain, you keep feeding your mind with negativity. That's when the negativity passes from the mental level to a physical level. And that's when you start seeing, uh, you know, uh, normal reports but pains and aches in your body or you know you experience sleeplessness or what we say in medicine as insomnia so this is what starts at a mental level and then is seen on a, and then it is seen on a physical level that is why we consider mental health to be important over other aspects so then can mental health change over time so now one needs to understand that Every person's mental health can change over time depending on so many other factors. You know, people have their own experiences, people have their own coping abilities. So that is also, an, uh, you know, it is also, it is also having an impact over, you know, or your coping abilities. So for example, if someone is working long hours, caring for a relative or experiencing economic hardship, they may experience poor health. But that is a phase and it will pass and you know, to pass from that phase, people have to put little efforts from their side too. And that is what comes with mindfulness or meditation. Now let's talk about homeopathy. So as you all know, homeopathy is a system of natural healthcare that has been, you know, for over 200 years now. Now, when I say homeopathy, homeopathy treats each person as a unique individual with the aim of stimulating their own healing ability. Homeopathy and holistic health is very, very closely related because we consider the patient as a whole. We don't treat just the body part or the condition with which he has come. We just, we take the whole person into consideration and treat him as a whole. So the homeopath selects the most appropriate medicine based on individual specific uh, symptoms and the personal level of health. Now the homeopathy is founded on two basic principles or the two strong principles. That is the first principle being like your like, like yours like. So now let me explain this in a very simple way. One, may, one way to assume that is the body knows what it is doing and the symptoms are the body's way of uh, taking action to overcome illness. So the healing response is very automatic in living organisms and that we term as the vital response. So this vital response is the energy of the body that, you know, responds and that gives the stimulate uh, or it stimulates the healing response. The similar medicine acts as a stimulus to the natural vital response, giving it the information it needs to complete its healing work. Now, the second principle is the minimum dose. Now, only a minimum dose should be uh, employed based on the understanding that the stimulus of the medicine works from the vitality and not imposed from the outside. So no matter what you do from the outside, only when you stimulate it from the within, it will start healing itself. And only very min minute doses uh, enough to you know, initiate this healing process, which then again, the body's healing system carries it on its own. Then homeopathic treatment works with your body's own healing powers to bring about health and well-being. When uh, the, you know, the patient is treated as an individual and not a collection of disease labels. Homeopathy treats all your symptoms at, a, at all levels of your being, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, and then finds the life cures like match for them. Homeopathically powered remedies providing the minimum dosage are gentle, subtle, and powerful. They are non-addictive and not tested on animals. 
so what we do is you know when the same medicine which is given to a healthy human being it start produces the symptoms so those symptoms you'll see even in the sick and those sick the symptoms of um, the patient who is sick when you administer the same uh, homeopathic medicine it cures the symptoms in the sick patient so this is the whole idea behind like cures uh, like cures like and the minimum doses you, know, you need not administer higher doses of medicine to you know uh make the patient uh, healthy even a minute dose or you know minute doses are even safe it will not harm the body and it will just stimulate the body's uh, healing process to do better so like cures like according to homeopathic understanding that which a substance is capable of causing is also capable of curing like i said when you give the same medicine to a healthy human being it produces the symptoms also which you give to a uh, you know a diseased patient or the patient who you know has symptoms you give it to him it is also capable of uh, curing that patient so before the medicines were prescribed the before the medicines were or can be prescribed their curative powers are discovered by testing them out on healthy human subjects and carefully noting the emotional mental and physical changes this is called proving this information constitutes the basis for like cures like we can also understand the law of similars in terms of homeodynamics the body's way of maintaining health you know what happens when there are, when a person becomes ill there's an imbalance so let me say you had a if one has a fright on one night and the next few evenings he experiences insomnia now one evening insomnia is considered to be normal but if it keeps happening on every other day that is called an imbalance and if the insomnia continues then the homeodynamics has not taken place that is the returning back to normal has not taken place and the patient has been stuck that is there is no flow of life so health is again characterized by characterized by flow of vitality now when this potentized homeopathic medicine is given to the patient it exaggerates the stuck symptoms by triggering the healing response and that's when the patient starts to heal its himself conventional western medicine you know suppresses symptoms in today's world we see so many medicines given just to suppress the symptoms or mask them and that is why you know we often have to stay on drugs for a long time but you know in homeopathy there is no suppression when a symptoms of insomnia appear and stay that means the homeodynamics has been stuck the body's way you know of responding has been stuck but the same homeopathic medicine will stimulate the body into action again and then patients will often experience a small and temporary aggravation in the symptoms as the vitality is energized into action to overcome that stasis or that static period now the self healing power when it is re established the flow of vitality again you know it continues so this is the whole idea now talking about homeopathic view of health you know now in today's generation we see the primary aim of treatment is to only you know treat the physical symptoms or you know treat the physical condition that the patient has come up with but then for a acute period it makes sense because symptoms may cause pain or interfere with normal functioning but homeopathy it treats like with like gets to the root cause of the symptoms so if i have to explain you with this picture first there is a central disturbance central disturbance then on a mental level then on an emotional level only after that the symptoms are seen outwardly on the physical level that is the physical body so the idea of uh, like uh, curing like uh, like with like may seem very counterintuitive why should that which can cause symptoms to arise in a healthy person cure them when applied to ill health this is a very you know generally people ask this now let me tell you <clears throat> for for a patient who comes with burns the first aid treatment that is given is you put the affected part and the soothing influence of cold even before coming to the patient the family members or the person himself he will put his hand or foot or whatever that is burnt into the you know running water that is cold running water now the heat of the burn that is that will be temporarily extinguished for say let's say 5 minutes your patient will the person will feel better but by doing that healing of the burn is not aided by that right you are just suppressing the pain or palliating the pain for let's say 5 minutes by putting cold water on it 
but that's not the same when it comes to homeopathy now when you come when you talk about homeopathic treatment for a burn we might give a medicated cream or even a naturally occurring substance or you know let's say our medicines we will administer it internally and that produces a reaction similar to burning or that stimulates the body's internal mechanism very similarly to how a burning uh, or how the physiology of burning is so this excites a reaction within the body that mimics the usual response to a burn thus speeding up healing under the action of such a medicine the sensation of burning will momentarily increase then easing the pain and natural healing will follow so the idea is that the body knows how best to respond and the best how help we can provide is to encourage it in its healing work that is to work with it and not against it so homeopathy works with the body and not against the body then you see many a times you'll find homeopaths telling you know homeopathic medicines stimulate or you know they strengthen the immune system so this is the main idea behind you know telling that the homeopathic medicine stimulate the in, in you know the immune system by giving it a push and then the body itself heals itself so the medicine what work homeopathic medicine does is it just stimulates your body that is the main thing or the main uh, you know the most important thing that it does is to stimulate the immune system rest of the thing your own body's healing takes place and that's when you start feeling better so now homeopathic definition of health can be covered in six words you know let's say the freedom to adapt to change and the healthy person is able to adjust freely according to the changing uh, circumstances Now the long term aim of homeopathic treatment is not to alleviate the immediate presenting problem but also to address the underlying causes a bacterium in itself is not a problem you know so people used to think that germs are the cause of the disease in the olden days it was always believed that germs are the cause of the disease but seriously germs are the cause of the disease suppose that there is no bacterial or the bacterial organism in the body but still there is some sickness in the body does that mean that he is free of uh, that illness no right so it is the weakness in the person who becomes sick because of it that needs to be treated not the bacteria every day thousands of bacteria and viruses enter our body only but only some of us become ill only some of them the question is why the person susceptible each person has their own susceptibility right i might be strong you might be stronger than me though even if me and you both are you know uh, exposed to a certain uh, bacteria or virus either i might get sick or you either of us but not the both of us why because susceptibility so a person susceptibility to disease can arise from physiological imbalance stress physical weaknesses and heredity and a well chosen homeopathic medicine strengthens a person's self curative response so when this working at an optimal level the naturally protective mechanisms will follow suit and weaknesses will be overcome now talking about individuality this is very important because homeopathy is the science of individualization because we believe that no two humans are alike so you know no two human is alike like you know doesn't catch your attention that you know everyone uh, not to everyone has diarrhea on drinking milk nor everyone nor everyone is sensitive to pollen two brothers with same eating habits but one is fat and the other is thin one child on being reprimanded gets into convulsions while the other becomes quiet and weeps someone sweats more on the head while someone more on the palms and soles so what are all these examples so the whole core idea behind this example is that no two humans are alike we might have our own uh, reactions or our own uh, experiences to a certain stimulus so when all of us are uh, exposed to one certain uh, feeling or one certain trigger each one will have a different reaction so this reaction becomes very important to individualize the patient so each individual is a separate entity altogether we all are made of the same flesh and blood but different sensitivities different tendencies and accordingly we react to the same situations but in a different way so now let's talk about challenges in you know developing a holistic lifestyle but before that you know let me tell you why holistic lifestyle and homeopathy is uh, very similar 
That's because when we treat patient as a whole, like I said, we consider the patient as a whole. The individualistic approach is given importance. That's because, you know, we have so many medicines and so many patients coming in, but the same medicine. So suppose, let me explain, giving an example. You know, we have two people coming with uh, complaints of cold and cough. But the same medicine will never be administered to both the patients. That's because those two, even if they have come with the same health condition, those two individuals are different individuals. They might just be presenting the same symptoms, but on a deeper level, they are two different individuals. And that's when individuality comes into play, considering the holistic as a whole. So considering the patient as a whole in a holistic way by considering his, you know, by prioritizing his mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and all the other aspects. So this is what differs in homeopathy and other system of medicine. We consider the patient as a whole. You take all the history, you take what has happened in the past, how the patient reacts in a certain stimulus, what has happened, what you know, how he reacts when he is in a stressful condition or what are his sensitivities, his tendencies, his disposition, everything is taken into play. And then only one single remedy that is the most similar to the patient himself is administered. That's when homeopathy, that's where homeopathy and holistic uh, medicine is very, very close to each other. Now, challenges in developing a holistic lifestyle. You know, in a country like India, we, we the problems towards a holistic approach to health are many. And because it cannot, and it cannot be practiced unless people are made aware of the challenges and situations. See, people, in, you know, there is a lot of lack of awareness. People do not know that there are so many variety of options available to them. There are so many, you know, so many things that they can do. So this is basically lack of awareness. So the lack of awareness, burden of communicable and non-communicable diseases. And also there is a lot of resistance to change in lifestyle and, you know, lack of basic facilities. When the person himself doesn't want to change his lifestyle, no amount of, you know, help or no amount amount of uh, exterior help will make him do anything that is something interior to him he has to decide on his own that he wants to change his lifestyle and unless he decides to do that nobody can do nobody can do anything and these are some of the big uh, uh, you know key challenges in holistic health in practicing holistic health then to address these challenges spreading awareness and modifications in dietary and lifestyle behavior are very important so how do you develop a holistic lifestyle? So the first thing to have a holistic approach to life is to have your mindset that your health compasses of all the five components. And therefore, to function, op function optimally, you have to consider and nurture each aspect of the component. So it's not like only, you know, giving importance to your physical aspect or just giving importance to your social aspect, you know, only going and going and socializing. That does not make sense. Suppose you will try doing it in a social aspect. You'll start mingling with people. You'll start, you know, socializing. But then there will come a point you will experience burnout. There will be exhaustion, social exhaustion. And that's when trying to uplift your social well-being, you will see the imbalance in your mental uh, health you'll start feeling frustrated you'll start feeling um, stressed you'll start feeling uh, fatigued so all these will all these will come up so you have to always know how to have a balance in all these aspects so you can ha apart with the uh, holistic diet and holistic diet is important because as i said earlier the brain is directly related to the gut so brain and gut health go hand in hand so what other things you can do is you can start meditation. Meditation, you know, just let me tell you, start with five minutes and then 15, 10, 20, then 30 minutes. And then you'll see a you know, major difference in your day-to-day -day activities. It gives you long lasting mental clarity, balance and mindfulness. Mindfulness again, because while meditating, you try to keep your mind in the moment, in the present. So that's where again, mindfulness comes into play and you will find yourself more focused and more peaceful. Then sleep. Now sleep is that part of the day where you can recharge physically and mentally and to achieve Sleep, stick to a sleep schedule. Do not play with your circadian rhythm. Avoid naps in the afternoon. Avoid alcohol, high alcohol intake, heavy meals in the evening. 
temporary insomnia is caused by st uh, stressful situ uh, stressful times and events or chron simply by the disruption in the sleeping pattern like i said again di disruption in the circadian rhythm on the other hand chronic insomnia may be caused by underlying health problems such as aging medications anxiety and other mental health disorders then practice intuitive eating intuitive eating encourages a healthy relationship with your food by trusting your body to make the right choices instead of the fad a diet fads with food and time restrictions so you'll see many of people when your times you'll see people sitting in front of the tv in front of your laptop and phones watching videos and you know having meals so that it will put you know it will have a negative impact with your food i mean the relationship you have with your food and also how the food uh, works in your body <clears throat> then physical hunger is when the body sends signals such as growling stomach irritability fatigue which tells you to replenish nutrients for energy consumption emotional hunger is also driven by the emotional need due to loneliness boredom sadness leading to craving and excessive food symptoms or uh, excessive food consumption so that's when it becomes very important to know when you are binge eating why you are binge eating it is very important to address the core uh, feeling behind it so when you address what it is that you're feeling either boredom either loneliness or some kind of sadness then sit with it process the feeling experience it and let it be for that moment you do not have to give in to eating at that moment because you do it today you start liking it suppose you start eating um, junk food or um, meat or you know sugar basically what i've seen is people you know they hang on to sugar sugar or any sweet or desserts for that matter because oxytocin is released in the body it makes you happy so this is when you start doing it on a daily basis which in turn on a you know, long on a chronic um, long term it is not uh, healthy then focus on positive relationships you know this is where social health again is very important and social health also affects physical and mental health also behavior and mortality positive relationships are proven to provide significant health benefits such as you know it lowers cardiovascular diseases it uh, strengthens your immune system and reduces uh, physiological response to stress and anxiety then being active you know physical exercise is one of the most cost effective methods to reduce to improve overall health and it has many benefits ranging from uh, lower risk of heart disease stroke type 2 diabetes and cancers mentally exercise has shown to improve sleep quality boost self esteem mood reduce the risk of stress depression alzheimers and dementia thank you any questions it's very good presentation and i hope that everyone will learn so many things that you have covered with the health and disease afterwards we went to what is homeopathy and what are the factors homeopathy is going to give towards the holistic concept of health so i have two questions uh, to begin with how to deal with the people they do have uh, so many options right now to choose a holistic concept of health so how do we tell them that integration towards medicine is going to change the definition of holistic concept of health how do you think that you are going to tell to the patients or to the people in the environment you know as much as i have seen even from the healthcare industry there have been many efforts that are being put up to have a integrated medicine you know integrated medical approach and talking about the efforts that are to be put by the patients or the people who come to us they need to start being aware see the basic um, challenge here is uh, unaware you know people are unaware of the whole concept nobody knows what is holistic health or nobody wants to know why all the other aspects even are important in having a healthy lifestyle everybody focuses on physical health only seeing you know the physical exterior body is healthy or not have I, have you ever seen anyone stressing over mental health or talking about he how healthy and how peaceful their mind is 
no one right that's because people are not aware people do not understand how important it is and this will come up or this will improve only after you know we start sharing knowledge as much as possible we start making them aware of how the whole concept like how the holistic concept of health is important and how it affects their day to day life i hope i have made you clear yeah yeah that's very good and second question is how to make the students the ayush field students to make aware of or the importance of holistic concept of health rather than just going towards a modern medicine or to stick to one system of medicine because that is not the future what we have to see so how yeah, do you that's... give a message to the students who are going to watch this session see i would i would really like to stress on the point that you know your system will never fail until and unless you do so you should have a very good hold of your knowledge this knowledge of knowledge that your system gives you and you should always have trust and faith in the system that you practice only when you have that trust and faith in the system and in yourself that you are going to heal the world with what you are doing that is when you will start uh, seeing the difference in the world so the first thing i would tell you all is give efforts and you know give inputs from your side and only then you will make a difference in the world even today when you know i see patients you know even be it online or be it in clinic i make at least one effort to you know make them realize that at least one thing you know be it exercise or be it yoga or be it meditation i'll make sure that i tell them so these are the small uh, efforts that we you know we put to make people aware so when you have that uh, faith and you know trust in your system you will really be able to do that difference to the world so thank you so much because we have covered all the concepts and that too in a very detailed way as a topic suggest holistic concept of health and homeopathy and i would really like to engage these kind of mm. conversation in a very good manner or in a very productive way in the future also and i hope your time will be valuable in the next sessions also we hope we can connect once again for the same sessions thank you so much for being so kind and accepting our invitation in a very short notice and give so good presentation to all of us thank you so much thank you thank you for having me over thank you we will end our session thank you so much <laughs> yeah sure